What's up guys, this is Matt, and welcome to Dwarf Fortress Part 7. This is the seventh installment of my Dwarf Fortress series, and that was just a, me repeating myself from the first thing I said. Anyway, um, this episode is going to be rather short. All I want to cover is offices and nobles, or probably the other order, so nobles and then offices. Um, you'll see at off screen, I did build out, uh, just two random rooms on this floor, um, maybe to be used as offices. This one will be an office. Um, you can set up dining rooms from tables. And I showed you that you press the letter Q and you go to a table and you could designate it as a dining room. However, chairs can be designated as throne rooms or studies, which is the same thing as an office. Um, so once we, once we make a noble, that needs an office, we will come in here and we'll make this room an office and we'll assign it to them. I also um, started digging out more bedroom areas and uh, I realized that the staircase was here so I kind of did the same type of pattern just off to the side a little bit. Um, but you get the idea. I also designated to dig down a level. They haven't done it yet. Um, it also looks like our farmers were able to start growing some stuff. Um, that's usually what these lines will mean as opposed to this sandy pattern. So I guess something's growing. Anyway, let's, uh, actually we don't really need to unpause the game. We're going to hit the letter. There I go again. Oh my goodness. All right. We're going to hit the letter N lowercase N for nobles. Does anybody else see it? I don't. There it is. Nobles and administrators. So we're going to hit the letter N and it's going to bring this this uh, screen up again. And you'll see this will be the name of the noble, the actual dwarf. This is their title. And this these will light up in case they have any requirements, demands, or mandates. Um, now I have seen some mandates before refusing or uh sorry forbidding the i guess like the export of floodgates or forbidding the export of this and that that's most of the mandates i've seen from my mayor which the expedition leader will become a mayor once your population is up to 50 dwarves um usually that's that's all i see though um requirements will light up though for some dwarves if they require um certain quality bedrooms or dining or personal dining rooms or offices for instance i believe it's the manager that once we make a manager requirements will be highlighted because he um, in addition to wanting a bedroom he needs an office so let's just go through real quick and let's just uh, assign a manager a broker and a bookkeeper i think those are the most important right at the beginning we're not going to worry about military right now. We're in calm surroundings, so we will need a military eventually, but I think we're okay for now. We're not too far into the game. So let's do the manager first. We're going to scroll down to manager and then hit enter. And this will bring up the dwarves that are eligible. Um, obviously, children cannot be appointed. And if you scroll down, it will tell you if, this, if any of these people have any relevant skills, and it doesn't look like they do. Um, I could come into Dwarf Fortress or into Dwarf Therapist, hit read to re-update. Look, see, everyone's happy now. Um, go over to social and we might be able to get an idea. You'll see, um, here's someone with the leadership skill. Is that our, that's not our, uh, our expedition leader though. Um, maybe an appraiser. This person, oh, and I believe that is our, that is our expedition leader. Um, we could, we could make the expedition leader have every job right now until we get more people into the, the fortress. Um, so let's, let's do that actually. I think. No, but see, I don't want my miner doing too much work because that will keep him away from mining. So maybe the, um, what does the woodcutter do besides cut wood? The woodcutter does absolutely squat. Okay. Although he is cutting wood right now. We c this engraver is doing nothing but stone detailing. 
So right now, even though they're storing items in a barrel right now, this will get the manager position. So who was that? I'm sorry. Eurist something. That should be enough for me to find it. And it's not. Yeah, it is right here. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Let's hit. I accidentally appointed someone. So let's hit the letter R for replace. And let's go down to Eurist, the engraver. And you'll see now that requirement is red. So if we press the letter enter again, it'll bring this up and it'll say that this person needs an office. You could also press enter for thoughts and preferences and you could read a little biography. Um, this person has been happy lately. She dined in a legendary dining room recently. She talked with a child lately and she admired a fine table. And it'll tell you she's married with kids and blah 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 28 years old, born in the 4th of Felsite in the year 69. Okay. So let's also, while we're here, make a broker. And you'll see that our expedition leader does have some skills for that. So possibly, why not? Let's make our expedition leader the broker and for bookkeeper. We have nobody, so let's well, let's make it the manager. Why not? And this, well, the requirement is here not because the bookkeeper needs something, but because it is the same person, it's letting us know that they have a need for an office. So now that we have those three dwarves, let's go to, we're going to go to the, uh, where I designated the office to be. So let's go down and we're going to hit Q for set tasks and preferences and we're going to go to the chair and make a room and you'll see it'll fill it up and it won't go out the door and we'll hit enter and we will assign this chair to our, whoops, assign to our manager and you'll see that it'll actually come up as their title right now. So we'll go down to, to manager and we'll hit enter. And now if you go back to the noble screen. There's nothing wrong. There's no red. It'll stay white to let you know that they have requirements under them, but there's no problems. And um, if we hit Z for status, you can now see that there is some sort of estimate as to the wealth of the fortress, as well as a little bit more accurate stores. So we're completely out of drink. We have no meat, although our s store of food overall is... Uh, maybe around 200. Um, what we're going to do, let's go back into nobles and let's go down to bookkeeper. And you'll see right now, bookkeeper is the only one that has this setting. So if we go down, bam, white. So let's hit S and let's change the precision to highest. Now this will take a little while. The bookkeeper is going to go in there and just really crunch some numbers. But when she comes out, um, we should have very accurate information as to how much food we have. And since we're out of drinks, let's go down to one of the stills and we'll just go either one. We'll hit Q to get to this and then A to add new tasks and let's hit B to brew a drink. And let's just, maybe we'll do five for now. Also, okay. Now I can show you that I, uh, I brought this up last video. My favorite noble on this screen is the manager and that's because they allow you to use what's called a manager profile so to give you an idea if we come back to just the regular screen um there's two ways you could do this although i i think it's you could either hit j or u so you can hit unit list or job list and then you hit if you see down at the bottom, the letter M. And if you were to hit J, you're also going to see the letter M down here at the bottom of the screen. So if you hit either of those buttons and then M, it's going to bring you to this screen. This is the manager profile. You'll see that with the letter Q, we can choose new orders. And this, you can scroll through with your arrow keys or the numpad arrows. And this is going to scroll through everything that you could possibly make. When you start typing, it narrows the search down. So let's say that we wanted to build uh, another rock table. We could start typing in rock, hit space, and then as soon as we start typing in the word table, it cuts everything else out. So we could hit enter, 
and now we could choose how many tables we want to build. So let's just designate 10 to be built. And you'll see that now we have some work orders for tables to be built. We didn't have to go to the Mason shop to set these orders. That's why I like the manager screen because you could come in here, I could hit new orders again, we could start typing in rock throne and we'll make 10 chairs to go with the 10 tables. And I didn't have to go um, hit add new task to a particular building and then decide how many I wanted or hit um, R for repeat and then worry that they make too many. Um, you could also, it's quick to come in here because not only can you be building um, things out of rock and wood, I could also come in here and I could type brew and I could start, I could set to brew another five drinks, you know, because we did five at the actual still and we'll designate five from here and I can have uh, lavish meals cooked from this screen. I could give all these orders. So the manager is my favorite noble. It makes running your fortress a lot easier. And uh, the manager will run off to his to his um, office at some point, and we'll start working on those orders, and you know, approving them and and all that fun stuff. Let's see. Let's go up to the furniture stockpile, and we have a couple doors left and four be oh four doors, four beds. So I can build another door here and a bed. This actually might be, I mean, this this is only metal, but it, it'll bring up the value of that room a little bit. And let's put a bed here and a bed here with a door, a door, and we can do one more. Okay. Oh, and that was the last bed. Okay. And it looks like someone finally claimed these bedrooms up here. And you'll see that any dwarves that are married will occupy the same bedroom, which is nice because um, sometimes I think, you know, I get a migration wave and I, I end up only needing half the number of bedrooms because everyone comes with their spouse. So yeah, you get 14 different dwarves, but you only need seven bedrooms because each one of them is married. And I believe that's all I wanted to cover. We didn't do much, but it was nobles and offices. And you will have to use this noble screen again in the future. Um, once we go to set up our hospital, we will assign a chief medical dwarf. And once we start on the military, we will have to have a military commander in order to start setting up squads. And actually, once you make a, a military commander in a squad, you will also get another noble under here, which will be called a what is it, a military squad leader instead of a military commander or a mi militia commander and then like a militia, militia squad leader or something like that. Um, so yes, that was the nobles and I showed you how to set an office and I think that was all we did this. Yeah, that's all we did. The videos are starting to bleed together for me. I'm sorry. Um, it looks like the planter doesn't have enough plants to brew into drinks. So we're going to have to hope that our stock of food gets up a little bit. We're going to hit Z. Yeah, we're running low on just about everything. I don't think our fishermen, let's go, you hit read just to kind of give it an update. Um, who's our fisherman? And he is just sleeping. So he's not even getting us any fish. A lot of help he is. Okay. Well, I want to thank you guys again for watching. And please leave me a like and a comment. Let me know how these how this series is going. If you want to see more, this was part seven of my Dwarf Fortress series. And until next time.